Well, the future of the budget airline Bonza is up in the air as the low-cost carrier's parent company calls in advisors to check on finances. The coalition is calling on Labor to save the airline, saying Bonza has breathed new life into the aviation sector. But there are some disgruntled passengers who disagree. Joining us live now is the aviation expert, Jeff Thomas. Jeff, always good to see you. Thanks for your time. Firstly, just set the scene Pleasure. for us. Some of our viewers may not have heard of Bonza. What's its MO? Why was it set up? By whom? What market is it targeting? OK, so Bonza was set up um, by 777 Partners uh, who are based in Miami, Florida. They're a long-term investment uh, company. Uh, they're involved in a ra raft of different uh, market sectors, including aviation. They have an airline in Canada, or they're part uh, investors in an airline in Canada called Flair. Uh, Bonza was their second uh, airline foray, and they've ordered about 70 737s from Boeing. The, the business model is similar to one uh, operated by Allegiant in the United States, and that involves connecting cities that are currently, or towns, that are currently not connected. And it's a whole new business model. It's worked very successfully for Allegiant, and of course also very successfully for airlines like Ryanair and EasyJet in Europe, where you're simply connecting cities that are not connected, uh, and that generates a new, uh, new travel, uh, new customers, because a lot of people only want to fly if they can go nonstop and also not going through a hub like Sydney or Melbourne, for instance, also shortens the journey and cuts the costs. So that was their business model. Um, they, they've launched and they've been you know, relatively successful. Uh, they've had some issues uh, with, uh, with getting delivery of aircraft, um, and that's a worldwide phenomena uh, coming out of COVID. Uh, because supply lines are, are very disrupted uh, in, in a whole lot of industries, particularly aviation. And that's one of the problems that's befallen uh, Qantas and Virgin as well over the last couple of years, as uh, viewers would well know. So there, so Bonds is having a few of those problems, and there are ha certainly some uh, customers who are upset uh, because of cancelled flights. But uh, essentially, you know, the airline is travelling uh, OK, um, uh, and the report in the Australian Financial Review um, is apparently simply not correct that, that quarter meant they have been called in. OK, so you don't expect the airline will be putting out the begging cap to the federal government for any sort of intervention soon? Look, look no, and I, look, uh, they, they, I don't believe they will be, and I don't think the government should. I mean... The government, if the, the government was going to save anybody, uh, they should have saved Virgin Australia when we when we slipped into COVID, and they also should have provided more funding for Qantas um, to help it through, um, similar to what the German government would, did with Lufthansa, because they shelved out Lufthansa fifteen billion dollars to get through. The Trump administration in the United States um, put up ninety billion to get the American airlines through COVID. So the Australian government, um, that was obviously a different government, was the Morrison government. Uh, they didn't uh, help Virgin Australia out. And I don't believe the Albanese government should help Bonza out. I don't think they need the help. So I'm not sure where all of this is coming from. Uh, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Jeff, I did want to ask you about an announcement we had from Qantas yesterday about international passengers soon getting access to Wi-Fi. Why has it taken mm. so long? Am I wrong to think that other international carriers have, have had it for a while on international flights? Look, they have. You're absolutely right, Ash. The, uh, the Qantas is kind of late to the game um, uh, when it comes to international. And, and there's a reason for that. And that is that, uh, the, as, as many viewers would know who fly, um, Wi-Fi internationally um, is a little bit hit and miss, or it has been up till now. And that's what Qantas wanted to avoid. They wanted to have something that was robust, that would deliver to every single passenger the ability to live stream. Uh, and that's what's now available through Viasat's Constellation. Um, and so domestically, for instance, Qantas Wi-Fi is very robust, very fast. Um, and they've got about a 75% take up of passengers using it on domestic flights which is um, double the world average for take-up. 
Um, and that's what they want to offer international. They want to say, right, when you're getting Wi-Fi on our aircraft, it's going to be free as well, uh, and it's going to be fast, and everybody can use it. Um, and uh, I think the passengers are really going to love it. Uh, it's going to take a couple of years to roll it all out. Um, the first aircraft, I believe, is ready this week, uh, and then they'll be progressively rolled out from here. Jeffrey Thomas, always appreciate you joining us to talk all things aviation. Thanks so much for your time. It's a pleasure.